Thank you all. In today's class, we shall discuss about Maxwell's equations. Maxwell, Maxwell's equations are the differential uh, forms of fundamental laws given by Gauss, Faraday, and Ampere. The first equation is divergence of d equal to rho, where d is the electric displacement vector and rho is the charge density. In the second equation, divergence of B equal to 0, where B is the magnetic induction vector, we get it from Gauss's divergence law in magnetism. The third equation is curl of E equal to minus del B by del T, where E is the electric field intensity, and we get it from Faraday's law in electromagnetic induction. The fourth equation is curl of H equal to J plus del dy del T, where H is the magnetic field intensity, J is the current density, and D is the electric displacement vector. We get it from Ampere's circuital law. Next. Now we shall proceed step by step to. Uh, Prove these equations. The proof of the first equation from Gauss's law in electrostatics. We know the total normal flux phi equal to e dot ds equal to q by epsilon zero, where q is the charge confined within the closed surface. <coughs> now, if we multiply this epsilon zero with we shall get the electric displacement vector. Then, from the above equation, we get d dot ds equal to rho dv, here we have taken the volume integration, rho is the charge density means charge per into volume, hence in volume dv total amount of charge is rho dv, that will give the q. Ultimately, from Gauss's divergence theorem, we have changed this surface integral to volume integral and in both sides. We have got the volume integral and as it is true for any elementary volume, so divergence of D equal to rho. This is the first equation of Maxwell. Proof, the, proof of the second equation from Gauss's theorem, we know surface integral V dot ds equal to 0 as no magnetic free pole exists. We know that electricity is the origin. It is a fundamental property. Magnetism is not the fundamental property. So, due to electric current, when magnetic field is produced, we get two poles, north and south, simultaneously. So, in any any elementary volume, we cannot, we must, we must get two poles simultaneously, not a single pole. So, it is zero. Right hand side is zero, and now we have again implemented the Gauss's divergence theorem that we have transferred the surface integral to volume integral as it is true for any elementary volume so divergence of b equal to 0 we have already proved the second equation now we are going to prove the third equation we know from faraday's law the rate of change of flux magnetic flux d phi by dt is equal to the EMA produced in the circuit. The negative sign we get from Lange's law, we know it very well. <coughs> now from the definition of the electric field, EMA produced in a circuit, E equal to E dot DL, we get it from the definition, the work done in completing a circle, E equal to E dot DL, then from this equation, we can write E dot dl equal to d d t of phi. Phi means b dot ds. When we, we uh, integrate it over a surface, then we shall get the phi, means flux link with that surface. 
Now from Stokes law, we have converted this line integral to surface integral curl of E dot ds equal to minus surface, surface integral del u by del t dot ds as it is true for any elementary whole elementary surface. So curl of E equal to minus del v by del t. This is the proof of the third equation. <coughs> now proof of the fourth law. Before going to prove the fourth law, we must take the conception of the displacement current. What is displacement current? We find that if there is any change in the electric field, a magnetic field is produced. Magnetic field can only be produced if there is any current. So, here So here we must consider a current that will be caused due to the uh, change of the electric field. This is called the displacement current. Actually this current is not generated by the flow of charges but it is produced by the change of the electric flux or electric field intensity. Next. Now we are going to have an expression for the displacement current. Suppose <coughs> we are going to charge a capacitor when the switch is made on in the circuit. We find a current in the emitter connected in series in the circuit, but between that two plates of the capacitor, either it is vacuum or it is filled with a dielectric. So no charge can flow in between the plates, but we are getting a current. What is the cause behind it? The cause is that when the charges are gathered or accumulated on the plates of the capacitor, the, we get the change in the electric field. This electric field in reverse gives us a current that is displacement current. This current is not due to the flow of charge, but this is originated due to the change of the electric field that is displacement current. Okay. Now, if x be the distance of separation between the plates, if the area of each plate is E and E the electric field intensity at any instant, then from Coulomb's theorem we can write E equal to sigma y epsilon 0, but sigma is the charge density on the plates. Now sigma equal to Q by A, Q is the charge on the plates at that instant. From this equation, <coughs> Q equal to sigma A, sigma equal to E epsilon 0, we have put it in the equation, we shall get Q equal to a epsilon 0 E. Hence, this displacement current ID equal to del Q by del T equal to A epsilon 0 del E by del T equal to A del D by del T. Here we have put epsilon 0 E equal to D. Then the displacement current is ZD equal to ID by A equal to del D by del T. Next. Okay. So, now, we shall remind the ampere circuital law that is cyclic integral V dot dl equal to mu 0 i. It is true, but it is partially true. It is true only for the conduction current, but when there is a displacement current, it should, should be uh, changed to certain form. As we have seen in the previous discussion in charging the capacitor. This law will be invalid when there is no flow of charge means in between the two plates. Now we have changed this equation, the right hand side mainly this current I to be the combination of two currents IC and I. B equal to mu, we have put B equal to mu H or mu equal mu is the magnetic permeability of the medium. 
then we get this equation where J is the conduction current density and J D is the displacement current density. Now, curl of H, we have converted this cyclic integral to surface integral as it is true for any elementary surface. So, curl of H equal to J plus J D equal to J D equal to del D by del T, you have proved it previously. <coughs> Now, this equation cyclic integral V dot PL equal to mu 0 IC plus ID is applicable both for conduction current and displacement current individually and combinedly. Similarly, this equation may be used both for conduction current and displacement current individually or simultaneously. Next. Properties of Maxwell's equation. Maxwell's equations are linear in nature. As any two fields, fields satisfy Maxwell's equations, their sum will also satisfy the Maxwell's equation. From Maxwell's equation, we get the equation of continuity. In this way, curl of H equal to, equal to J plus del D by del D. We take the divergence of both sides, we get this as divergence of curl equal to 0. Therefore, we get the equation of continuity. Maxwell's equations are invariant under Lorentz transformations. Maxwell's equations are not symmetric with respect to the electric and magnetic fields. Maxwell's equations predict the existence of electromagnetic waves. From the discussion or from these equations, we can predict the propagation of electromagnetic waves in space also. The velocity of electromagnetic wave in different medium and other properties of the medium. This is the end of today's class. Thank you all.